Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, for the mean, thank you for the general suggestion. Bismillah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Using abbreviations in academic writing. Today's topic is using abbreviations in academic writing. Okay. In today's class, first of all, we'll talk about uh, abbreviation. What is meant by abbreviation? Okay. Then we'll talk about certain rules for the use of abbreviations and cer certain irregularities in uh, abbreviations, then certain rules, okay? And finally, we will move to some frequently occurring uh, abbreviations in academic writing, clear? So uh, starting with the definition of abbreviation, what is meant by uh, uh, abbreviation? Abbreviation is actually a shortened form of a written word or phrase used in place of the whole word or phrase. Okay? Abbreviation is a shortened form of a written word or phrase. We have got a word or a phrase, we go for its shortened form. Like we, sh we write the short form of a word or a phrase. Okay? In place of the whole word. Like, uh, instead of writing the whole world, like uh, uh, instead of writing the National University of Modern Languages, okay, we simply write NAML, okay. Instead of writing doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R, we simply write D-R, okay. So it is the shortened form, it is a short form of the complete word or the complete phrase okay so this is what we call abbrevi abbreviation the shortened form of a word or phrase used in place of the whole word or the whole uh, whole phrase abbreviations may be used to save space and time specifically time we use abbreviations to save time and sometimes uh, space as well abbreviations are used to avoid repetition okay of long words and phrases for example, if you want to write an essay on NAML, and again and again, if you write the National University of Modern Languages is like this, and the National University of Modern Languages has got qualified teachers, the National University of Modern Languages has got uh, a, a library, the National University of Modern Languages is situated in Peshawar town. So again, in a, like, you know, time and again referring to uh, over and over again referring to the same thing, repeating the same complete phrase, the National University of Modern Languages, the National University of Modern Languages, it leads to repetition, it leads, it leads to redundancy. So what do we do? We go for the shortened form, we go for the abbreviated form, normal for the acronym, okay, in order to avoid repetition. Or simply, to confirm to conventional usage there are there, there is you know the conventional usage of certain phrases for example the conventional use in writing is usa instead of writing the united states over and over again okay so these are the reasons that we need to use abbreviations clear so far why what is abbreviation and why do we need to use abbreviations in writing is this clear yes sir okay okay good good now uh, rules for using correct abbreviations now why do we use why do we need to learn the rules for using abbreviations why why do we need to uh, to learn those rules okay rules for using correct abbreviations we need to read the, to learn the rules because these abbreviations are very inconsistent they're very inconsistent like there is no consistency okay and they're very arbitrary. Like there is no, sometimes there is no direct connection between the abbreviated form and the original form, the complete form, okay? And there are some possible variations as well. So due to these three reasons that abbreviations are inconsist uh, incons uh, inconsistent, they are 
they are inconsistent, they are arbitrary, and there are possible variations in abbreviations. That is why we need to learn the rules of abbreviations. Uh, inconsistent means like, uh, look at this, October, okay? We have university, uh, UNIF, or even uni, UNI for university. We have count for uh, count, uh, continued, okay? Count for continued. We have got gift for government. We have got doctor, uh, DR for doctor. Similarly, CEO. Now, if you look at all these abbreviations, okay? Here we have the first three words only, like the initial letters, October. From university, we have got UNIF or UNI. From continued, we have got count, like the initial letters are there. Similarly, some of the words, if you look at government, so we have got GOV from the beginning and T from the final position of the word. Okay, similarly, if you look at the word doctor, so we have got D from the beginning, from the initial position, and R from the final position instead of the initial few letters as mentioned in the previous examples now if you look at this one the here we have the initial letters only okay like we have got a ceo chief executive of organization we have usa usb by the way so here we have got the initial letters only and here we have got again the uh, web down now these are ceo they are uttered as individual letters c e o while they are uttered as complete words, okay? Uh, Webda, Nomal, NATO, UNICEF, UNESCO. Now, if we look at all these different variations, they are completely different. Like here we have the initial letters. Here we have got the initial letter in the final letter. Here we have got the initial letters, but uh, pronounced, the, we pronounce the letters separately. Here we have got the initial letters, but all the letters are pronounced as one single word, okay? That is why uh, we say that ab abbreviations are inconsistent, they're arbitrary, and there are variations in abbreviations. That is why we need some rules for the use of, the correct use of abbreviations. Now, what, what are those rules? Let's talk about all those rules in detail, okay? There are so many rules. I have collected uh, around about 16 or 17 rules. So let's talk about them in detail along with examples, okay? Rule number one, when introducing an abbreviation for the first time, place it in parentheses after the spelled out term. Thereafter, the abbreviation may be used, okay? When you are using an abbreviation for the first time in your essay, for the first time does not mean for the first time in your life, okay? It means for the first time in your particular essay. So when you are using the uh, abbreviation for the first time in your essay, you need to put the abbreviation in parentheses like this, Okay, I have underlined it to make it clear, okay, to make it uh, explicitly visible. Uh, write it in parentheses and spill it out, spill out the complete term. Like, you need to write the National University of Modern Languages in parentheses, in brackets, you need to write normal and UMA like this, okay? And then you may, you, you may continue the sentence. Then, thereafter, the abbreviation may be used alone. Like from that onward, then in the remaining sentences till the very end of your writing, till the very end of your essay, you may use the abbreviated form, okay? Then uh, you no longer need to mention the complete term, uh, National University of Modern Languages. Similarly, <coughs> okay, let me turn off. Uh, all the microphones are off. Uh, Maham City, Sabah's microphone is also off. Okay. Uh, for the for example, if you're right, if you're <coughs> writing an essay on uh, you know a web da, a water and power a power developmental authority, so for the first time you need to mention that the water and power the water and power developmental authority in parentheses you need to write. Webda, okay, the abbreviated form, the acronym. 
then whenever you want to, you, to use this word again, you need not to mention the complete phrase, the complete word, uh, the water and power developmental authority. You may simply go for webda, okay, for the shortened form. But for the first time, you have to mention uh, the complete terms because you need to make, to, to enable the reader to, you know, to, to spill out the abbreviated form. You need to make him uh, aware that what does that this abbreviation actually stand for? G. Any question? Yes, sir. Okay, sir, this is that there are some competent people who are approved of this abbreviation, right, sir? Yes, sir. और कुछ होती हैं जो सेल्फ मेड बनाई होती हैं क्या हमें फिर किस तरह पता चलेगा कि ये कुछ तो खुद ही जो ना सेल्फ मेड बनी होती हैं उसका पता नहीं था जैसे नमल ये तो ठीक है पता चल जाए जैसे एनजीओ एक लफ्ज़ है नॉन गवर्नमेंट आर्गेनाइजेशन सर जी जी तो इस तरह जो ना ये तो ये सेल्फ मेड हमें फिर क I'm going to discuss these things at the end of the presentation. Okay, at the end of the lecture, there are two ways. Uh, we need to uh, we need to learn the most frequently occurring abbreviations, and we use we need to use a standard dictionary. These are the two ways uh, we can you know address this issue. But we'll discuss this issue at the end of the lecture in detail, if you don't mind, because we'll have those examples as well uh, as well along. Okay, so let's uh, go smoothly towards uh, that last point, uh, continuing with the rules. Should, should we, Elias? Thank you, sir. Okay. okay, thank you. So, G. rule number two, the first rule is, uh, it must be clear, okay, that first of all, we need to use the complete rule in, in parentheses, the abbreviated form, then whenever we want to mention that name again, we just need to go for the abbreviated form, clear? I'm moving to rule number two, abbreviate, uh, abbreviate the name of familiar institutions, countries, tests, diseases, diplomas, individuals, and objects or terms, okay? Like, uh, we have NASA, USA, FBI, TV, PC, CIA, USB, ATM, PTI, normal. For tests, we have got our organization, we have got, you know, NTAs, or ETA test, ETA, okay, uh, or SST, SST, secondary school teacher, PST, primary school teacher, okay. So uh, abbreviations must be used for these, you know, familiar situations, these familiar countries, familiar tests, familiar diseases, okay, like we have COVID-19 nowadays, uh, familiar diplomas, okay, DIT, for example, Diploma of Information Technology uh, for individuals, for objects in terms, for those things which are familiar only, for familiar things, not for unfamiliar things, unfamiliar countries, unfamiliar diseases, or, uh, diseases or unfamiliar, uh, like any kind of words, okay? So rule number two, then we have got rule number three, uh, abbreviate courtesy titles and personal titles, okay? Uh, Courtesy titles means like we have got Mr. Mrs. Doctor, okay? Uh, these are known as courtesy titles. The titles which are used to show courtesy to someone, like when we want to give respect to someone, so we uh, refer to that, to, to we address that individual is uh, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, okay? So uh, we need to use uh, abbrev abbreviations in such cases, like for use, uh, when we want to use courtesy titles or personal titles, okay? But there are certain rules. Rules are use a comma or dot before and after an abbreviation in a sentence. Like, uh, Mr. So we have to use this dot, okay? Um, uh, we have got Miss. So this abbreviated form, this uh, uh, period must be there. Then doctor, 
again it must be there okay md management director so this dot must be there proof stands for professor the dot must be there period professor okay uh, she went to dr safir yesterday okay she went to the doctor yesterday now look at this if you want to go for the full form we we need not to mention the period the uh, the full stop but if you want to go for the abbreviated form then we must put this period this dot this full stop okay sir uh, g sir baz uh, uh, words jo hai jo is tarah mr miss hum is miss uh, initial word capital lete ho aur aakhir wala chota lagate hain lekin sir professor mein r kyu nahi lagate ya to sir professor aur darmiyan wala word ek lag gaya hai that is why i told you the uh, abbreviations abbreviations of the english language are very inconsistent there are variations in them okay that is why we are learning the rules the rules must be learned and the most frequently occurring abbreviations must be learned rather than be memorized okay because they are inconsistent and this is what i told you that uh, well, like the case should have been that instead of doctor we should have p like this and r for professor but the english people uh, this is like according to near their norms the correct form is proof for professor and that is why i told you that the english abbreviations are very inconsistent in nature and we have to we have to learn the rules we have to learn the abbreviations individually clear uh g so this is rule number 3 moving to rule number 4 use abbreviations bc and ad uh, stands for before christ and after christ okay jesus christ uh, without periods to indicate date okay uh bc always follows the year but ad may follow or precede the year now look at bc it always follows follows the year like it comes after the year all the time okay while ad either may follow the year here is the year okay uh, 400 and this ad is following it now ad may precede the year like ad 400 uh, mr so in so or mrs so in so was born in uh, you know uh, 480 or you may say in ad 400 but we may say uh, 400 bc we cannot say in bc 400 that would be wrong according to the norms of abbreviations of the english language clear so bc must be after the year while ad can be either after or even before the year it, like both are correct clear uh, rule number 5 abbreviate months and days of the week only when they are part of a full date or in a chart where space is limited okay names of uh, days and weeks we need to abbreviate names of weeks and names of days when they are a part of full date like if you look at look at this it is full date okay december 16 1963 now if i only say december 16 then i must write the full form of december not the abbreviated form okay if it is a full form of uh, a date then we may abbreviate the names of weeks the names of months and the names of days like uh instead of writing wednesday we may write uh, wed simply okay instead of uh, monday we may write mon only okay and in charts as well in charts okay when we want to spay uh, when, when we want to you know save space we go for the abbreviated form of uh, the names of days and the names of weeks and the names of uh months okay if you look at calendar in academic calendar usually there we do not have much space in the charts okay so that is why we mostly go for the abbreviated form then uh, rule number 6 use abbreviations for clock time clock time like am pm after meridian and uh, post meridian um, we have awal masbakhina and post masbakhina as well okay if someone is confusing these terms now uh, use capital letters and periods 
use capital letters and no periods or use lowercase letters and periods like we have got three rules rule number one capital letters and periods like this capital letter period here and at the end as well capital letters and no periods 7 30 a.m without any period here without any uh, full stop okay and lowercase letters small letters and periods like this okay we have we can see the periods here now uh, simply this rule can be concluded is that uh, capital letters am and pm they can or cannot be uh, like they they may or may not have the full stops on the other hand if you want to write the small letters for am and pm then we must put the full stops okay so capital letters may or may not have the full stops whether or whether or not we put the full stops both are correct but if you want to write the, the you know the small letters and if we do not we do not put the cap the, the uh, these uh, you know full stops then it would be grammatically incorrect according to the norms and rules of the english language it will be incorrect okay moving uh, look at this example the meeting is in the am okay and the meeting is in the am means like the meeting is before 12 am uh, 12 pm somewhere at uh, 5 a.m 6 a.m 10 a.m 11 a.m like that okay the meeting is at 30 a.m now if i say it is at 30 a.m it is grammatically incorrect because it, the letters are small and the full stops are missing that is why it is grammatically incorrect okay so rule number six moving to rule number seven use abbreviations without periods for time zone time zone means like every country has got its own time zone we have got pkt for pakistan time zone we have got est for eastern standard time zone we have got mst for mountain standard time zone pdt for uh, uh pacific uh, pacific daytime daylight time zone okay uh, uk u is like every country has got its own time zone okay now uh, you when you when you want to, to write the time zone you need to write the abbreviations without periods if you can see we cannot see any uh, any pull stop here okay so rule number seven then we have got rule number eight measure measurements should be spelled out not abbreviated except in tables and charts measurements like if you if you want to write uh, 10 miles per per hour okay if you want to write in your essay for example you are uh, writing an essay on diet uh, uh, on balanced diet or, or on the advantages of physical exercises okay or the advantages of uh, roots uh, root safety for example so you must write mile per hour miles per hour instead of mph which is abbreviated form okay this is incorrect similarly inches if you write i n and dot it is incorrect because in writing you need to write the full form for measurements if you want to create charts or tables and you want to you know uh, save space over there because uh, you simply due to the space constraints you cannot write mile per hour miles per hour the complete phrase over there so over there you may go for mph then otherwise if you're writing essay like in the form of writing you must go for the full form of uh, measurements and you must not go for the abbreviated forms rule number nine the word number the word number okay n-u-m-b-e-r this word can be abbreviated when it is followed by a figure otherwise you must spell it out okay number n u m b e r if it is followed by a number by a figure like number 65 then you may write the abbreviated form n o followed by a dot but if uh, like the number one uh want the number one uh, the number i want is 65 okay now look at this the number i want if i say i want 
table number 65. Now, in this case, the word number in UBER, it follows a figure, it follows a number, then I may, I may, uh, I may write the short form, okay? Followed by a dot, like I may go for the abbreviated form. But if I want to write a, a number in your MBER and it does not follow a number, it does not follow a figure simply, then I cannot write that the number, if I write the number I want a 65, it would be wrong. I must go for the full form then. If it follows a figure, such as 65 in this case, okay, then we may go for the abbreviated form. Otherwise, we have to write the full form in our writing, okay? Moving to rule number six. Use periods in most abbreviations that contain lowercase letters. Abbreviations which contain lowercase letters, such as PM, okay, such as EG. So in such cases, we must use periods, we must use the full stops, okay, the dots. Do not use periods in most professional titles, the names of well-known businesses and organizations and acronyms. When we have the most, you know, the names of uh, the most well-known businesses or organizations, like we have got, uh, or the most well-known, uh, you may say, designations as well, uh, we have got UOM, for example, University of Malakand, so we need not to write the periods here, okay? We have got NAML, which is a, uh, an acronym here. So in case of acronym as well, we need not to mention the periods, okay? We have got PTI, PMLN, uh, OCD, okay? IBM, we need not to put uh, these things, uh, the periods here. But if you want to write the lowercase letters, such as EG, such as PM, then we, uh, most in most of the cases we need to put the period. So this is rule number 10. Okay um, Then rule number 11 Abbreviate common Latin terms Latin terms Latin abbreviations. We'll discuss a list at the end. Okay, so uh, when we want to mention those Latin terms, which have got we have got from uh, from the Latin language, so in most of the cases we abbreviate them. Okay, and the body of your writing use the English meaning. Like uh, in parentheses, we should write "est." If you want to write in the body of our uh, essay, so we need not to write "atc," uh, uh, etc. We mention to write the English meaning and so on. Okay. Similarly, if I want to write something in parentheses, i.e., like uh, the dominant party of uh, the dominant political party in Pakistan, or and nowadays the dominant political party in Pakistan, so I write in parentheses I E, which stands for that is P T I. Okay has imposed inflation on the people nowadays. So the, the dominant uh, party, the dominant political party in Pakistan, i.e. PTI, and then I'll continue the sentence. So if you want to write uh, such abbreviations in parentheses, then we may go for the uh, abbreviated form. Otherwise, we must go for the original form, for the English meaning. Like, uh, the dominant party of the uh, English, uh, the dominant party of uh, Pakistan nowadays, that is PTI. So I should write the full form. That is okay. Or I may write in other words for some other examples. Okay, but do not write I E E T C E G C uh, C F or N B uh, et al without parentheses. When we want to write these things in parentheses, only and only then we may go for this uh, abbreviated form. Things are changing now. Uh, rules, norms are changing now. People have started using uh, writing these things outside the parentheses as well, like uh, as part of our sentences, as part of the sentences. People have uh, started using these things. Things are changing now, but typically, according to the rules, according to the norms, we must write these abbreviations inside parentheses if we want to write the 
things is part of our sentences, then we need not to abbreviate these things. Okay. Uh, do not abbreviate. Uh, do not abbreviate words to save time and space and formal writing. And formal writing, keep in mind, like while writing an email to your research supervisor or an email to your teacher, okay? Do not go for the abbreviated form to save space or time. Always go for the full time, uh, full form. Like instead of through, go for the full form through. Instead of uh, OCT dot, go for October instead of with or uh, you know uh, between instead of writing this uh, you know uh, short form shortened form always go for with or the complete between instead of source for sociology uh, sociology night so must write night the complete form for monday write the complete form for brothers also write the complete forms in Professional writing, okay, informal writing. Do not go for the abbreviated form to save space and time in professional writing, informal writing, okay. Moving to rule number 13. When an, abbrevi when an abbreviation comes at the end of a sentence, use only one period, one full stop, one dot. However, place question marks or exclamation marks after the period in the abbreviation. For example, uh, we have got I woke up at uh, I woke up at seven fifteen a.m. Now this dot is a must after a.m. Okay, because when you want to write a.m. in small letters, we have to write two dots, one and two. Now it is at the end of a sentence. We need to write another dot as well, but that is not necessary because we already have got one uh, dot. Or simply if I say, I talked to that mister. Sometimes we use the word mister ironically, okay? I, talk, I talked to that mister. Now, I talked to this mister. Now, mister must be followed by a dot. Like as we see, uh, as we write usually, mister Safir or mister Tariq or mister Ilyas, okay? We write uh, Miss Huda or Miss Maham or any name can be there, fine, but it must be followed by a dot. Now, if it is at the end of a sentence, like I talk to that mister, I talk to that miss. Now, in, in uh, this dot number one, it is for uh, miss, it is, you know, the part of the abbreviation, miss or mister. And then a second dot should be about the, to indicate the end of a sentence, but we need not to mention that another dot okay this one dot is sufficient to indicate both the abbreviation as well as to signal the end of the sentence now if you want to uh, ask a question if there is a question or some exclamatory sentence so where are you going mister where are you going mister okay now where are you going mister in this case or where are you going miss in this case we need to put <coughs> this dot to indicate the abbreviation as well as this sign of interrogation like both the punctuation marks should be there okay if there is an exclamatory sentence then the after the dot of the abbreviation this mister after this dot or after this dot for example we have to write the uh, exclamatory mark as well clear so this is rule number 14 moving to rule number uh, rule, uh, rule number 15, 14 Use S and not apostrophe S for the plural form of an abbreviation, plural, okay, abbreviated plural. Like if I say, I, uh, I got three DVDs from the shop. So three DVDs, DVD stands for the digital versatile disc or di uh, digital video disc. We have got the CD disc and DVD, okay. So uh, USB, for example, I got three USB, okay. So do not use apostrophe in S to formulate the plural form of the abbreviation, okay? Simply write a small S at the end without adding an apostrophe, okay? Like this. If we add this apostrophe, three DVDs or three USBs, if I put this apostrophe, this inverted comma, then it would be wrong, okay? We have the, the session is about to over because we have got only 
uh, few seconds. So let's start another session of 15 minutes only. Can you join the uh, join the video same, uh, same session again? Okay, sir. Sir, up, pani pile. <sighs> 